It's Heal Heat time. Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and this is our WWE show for the week. Let's start off with the so-so segments of Monday Night Raw. Basically, they weren't good, they weren't bad, they were just there. First off, we have Los Matadors and El Torito versus Heath Slater, Jinder Mahal, and Hornswoggle, who seems to be part of 3MB all of a sudden. It's okay. Um... The first two times I seen Hornswoggle and El Torito on main event and SmackDown, it had some novelty to it. Putting them in a six-man tag like this, just, I don't know, it just didn't seem special to me. They should have kept the, the interaction, the first interaction, or all their flagship show, in my opinion. Next up, surprisingly, the Usos versus the Rhodes Brothers, Cody and Goldust. Uh, to me, I just think that this could have been so much better. And at the end, they started teasing the breakup of the eventual breakup of the Rhodes Brothers. Rybaxel gets involved. You know, they're going to be the contenders for the titles. Like I said, maybe it's my expectations were a little bit higher than what ended up being on the show, but it just didn't. It just didn't connect for me. And the Usos pick up the win. Coming off of that, we're going to go into our bad portions of the week. Sad to say, because they actually are spending a little more time on Divas, Emma versus Layla. Now, Emma is a diva I really like. I think she has all the skills, all the talent to be a big-time player. However, for some reason, she's being portrayed as Santino's girlfriend or love interest or whatever, and she has a pink cobra. Yep. As it is, one Cobra sock pocket puppet wasn't enough. We needed two. <sighs> to me, it, it's just a waste of good talent to make her a comedy wrestler. Not that there's anything wrong with comedy wrestlers, but in a division that's so lacking good actual wrestling talent, why? And this ongoing Fandango versus Santino feud that's been going on for seemingly ever. I, I don't know why it's still going on. I don't know what the payoff is. I don't know if there ever will be a payoff. Just, to me, the whole thing is just bad. Hopefully they can break Emma away from this as quickly as possible and we can forget this part of her career as she moves on to bigger and better things. Next up, a guy that should be moving on to bigger and better things Alexander Rusev versus Sin Cara. Now, the reason I'm the, I don't like this is they're building Rusev just like they did with Ezekiel Jackson, just like they did with Ryback, just like they did with the last 50 guys, Vladimir Kozlov. There's been these undefeatable monsters. The only one that so far that I've seen that actually worked was Ryback. And then they somehow messed that up. Rusev, to me, he has that I'm a sad lost puppy face. Mm -hmm. Feel bad for me. Which doesn't portray I'm a monster. I want you to look mean and nasty like you're going to kill me if you're a monster. Rusev faces off against Sin Cara. Again, Sin Cara, another, another person they could be using in a much more prominent role. I understand that since it's Sin Cara version 2, that he's nothing more than a jobber, but we eventually are going to need a, a replacement for Rey Mysterio Jr. They could have booked him, even with it being version 2, as being a replacement for Rey Jr., I don't, to me, the whole thing just smelled bad. Rusev needs to work on his on his facial expressions. I don't want to see a guy that looks like he just lost his cat 
I want to see a guy that looks like he wants to eat your cat. Just my opinion. Now coming off of that, we're going, going to go into our question of the week. The question of the week last week is, who would you like to see be added to evolution as kind of the young person in evolution? Now, uh, we do got some answers from our friends. First is from our friend Toshi Vahida Vega. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Uh, please write in the comments how to pronounce it properly so I can. What if Dean Ambrose portrays a shield and becomes the future of the evolution? Good selection, one that's kind of off the radar, one that people aren't thinking about. I like the idea, it works for me. It works within the feud. It works on a few different levels. Next up is from at AUP116 on Twitter. The only person that could benefit from joining them would be the intro to Sting. But outside of that, nobody just keep Orton, Triple H, Batista, and have Kane as the side piece. Okay, um, kind of sticking with Evolution as the, the three-man band or the three-man group that they are. I can live with that. Uh, Sting makes sense with his ties to Ric Flair. Next up is from our friend Justin Brizantine. I think the one of the one of the members of the Shield should join Evolution and become the future talent. I knew everyone sees Reigns as the future face of the company, but him turning heel and joining Evolution would help the process, the progress, his character as well as the overall storyline. In addition, if they were willing and able, I would have Ric Flair return to help manage Rollins Ambrose against their former partner. This could happen all happen after the apparent six man tag at Extreme Rules where either Rollins or Ambrose Rollins or Ambrose get paint, pinned by Triple H and Reigns accepts the outstretched hand of the game. I think it would fit the I also think he would fit the look of evolution. That's my idea. Pretty solid choice. Again another you know someone splitting off from the shield and joining the the evil faction makes a lot of sense. Next is from our friend Cyan Williams. I like Wade Barrett. He reminds me of a younger Triple H. Under Triple H's guidance, he could be this generation's Triple H as a badass heel similar to what Triple H was to Austin and The Rock. I, I definitely agree. I think Wade Barrett, and I hope that this time the push actually sticks for him. I think he's an amazing talent. When they did the first season of NXT, him and Daniel Bryan stuck out like sore thumbs among everybody else that was in that group as being the two best talents on there. Next up from our friend Dizzlepup. I could see them maybe enticing one of the Shield members, most probably Reigns, to join, especially if they're going to run with breaking them up like everyone suspects. If they didn't, my pick would be better. He think If he takes the IC title as a curveball, it would be a huge shot in the arm for the Divas division if they took a Diva as well as a future guy, Paige or Emma, maybe. That definitely would be a curveball, and it definitely would fit. I think Emma would probably fit the Evolution character, or maybe bringing up Charlotte from NXT, who's Ric Flair's daughter. Again, working with the Evolution makes sense, has the ties to them. I love the idea. It's Phenomenal. Probably better than anything that WWE writers thinking of doing right now. And last but not least is from our friend Closure Domus. I still believe in Curtis Axel. I know he didn't have a memorable IC title run last year, but he's still a great third generation talent. Under Triple H's guidance, he would be a main eventer for sure. So if being a Paul Heyman guy didn't work, maybe Evolution could be his solution. Um... I, I agree. I like Curtis Axel. I don't know what the missing component is, but maybe a rub from a guy like Triple H or from Randy Orton, from Batista, would help him to get to that level. My opinion, and I, I like what some of the guys said, and I definitely agree. I think, I think Wade Barrett would be an excellent choice. I think Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, I think Curtis Axel, all wonderful choices. I like everything that they're going with there. It all makes sense. I'm thinking, what about my opinion? What about a guy that's going about to debut in Bo Dallas? He's got that cocky, 
kind of cocky attitude. I know it doesn't really fit with his motivational thing, but he, he could change it on the fly. Also, maybe someone else from NXT, uh, a Corey Graves would work well. He's very sadistic. He could work with that group. Um, the Ascension being brought up together as part of Evolution would work for me as well. I'm really blown away from the idea of throwing a diva in there. Uh, Charlotte, Emma, I think would be the two best bets. Paige would be an outside option just because to me, she's anti-authority already, kind of, in my opinion. So I think you'd want to keep her away from that. Um, but I, I like the ideas. I would pull up someone from NXT. My choices would be either Corey Graves, the Ascension as a group, or Bo Dallas and joining Evolution. Next up, our question of the week for this week. With There have been rumblings about war games coming back where Evolution and the Shield eventually are going to meet in a war games match. Now, it's been more than a decade since we've seen it, at least on a major level. I know it's been done in some independent companies over the years. With that, what other kind of gimmicks or gimmick matches would you like to see back? Whether it be the Tower of Doom, the <laughs> the uh, King of the Ring tournament, the Buried Alive match, you know, there have been several over the years that WWE's put out Inferno matches. Other than the War Games, what is another match that you would like to see come back or style or whatever you would want to consider gimmick match that you'd like to see come back. Let us know what you think. Hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. Put it down where? Down in the comments right down there. There's a nice little box for it. But anyway, I digress. Getting back to the show, back to what we're mainly talking about, the good portion of the night. We're going to start off with what started the show off. Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella coming out to the ring to celebrate. Daniel Bryan obviously broken up, which if you don't know, his in real life, Daniel Bryan's father surprisingly passed away this week. Emotional couple weeks were on winning the world title, getting married, now his father passes away. Uh, before we go much further, I just want to pass my condolences. I know he's never going to see this video. Um, but my condolences are out there to you, Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson, the American Dragon. You've given me an extreme amount of joy watching your career for the last decade plus. I was extremely happy that you became world champion. It felt like I was right there, part of it with you. And I'm happy for you that you married the woman of your dreams. I'm also very sad about your father passing. And I, let, I just want you to know you're in my prayers, you're in my thoughts, and I hope this goes by. I hope whatever solace you can take in, in this, I hope you go well, my friend. hope you carry on well into the future and give us years and years of more very entertaining segments. But back to the show. Sorry about that, guys. Just had to put it in there. I, I feel an emotional connection with certain people. Daniel Bryan is one of them. And uh, that brings out Stephanie McMahon, who talks about Kane. Kane comes out with the mask on, hits Daniel Bryan with three different tombstones, one on the steps, one on the floor, one on the table, basically so Daniel Bryan could have the night off, which he definitely deserved after that news. Now, coming off of that, we have our semifinals in the... Intercontinental number one contender tournament. Wade Barrett versus Sheamus. Thoroughly enjoyed this match. This is the kind of match that Sheamus needs to be having on a more solid basis. He needs to be going up against guys that he can let loose his hard-hitting style against and they can let loose their style against. Wade Barrett and Sheamus is a perfect pairing for each other. Barrett picks up the win surprisingly, which I thought to me that was amazing that they would give Barrett this win, such a big win as part of this tournament. Hopefully that Bad News Barrett going forward is going to get the push that he finally deserves. Now coming off of that, 
We had the Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family come out for a promo. The <coughs> the WWE app, the WWE let you vote on their app whether John Cena would face Luke Harper in the main event, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, or all three of the Wyatt family. Bray Wyatt talks about the winds of change shifting to him, that he has the whole world in his hands, gets the crowd to sing with him, basically trying to say, go ahead and vote for all three of us, which we'll talk about a little bit later, what eventually did happen. Which brings us into our next huge feud, Evolution and The Shield. Evolution comes out, cuts their promo, Shield comes out and reacts, S.H.I.E.L.D. goes to challenge Evolution, who are joined on the stage with pretty much the heel portion of the roster. Teasing the tension going forward. I like what they're doing. I think this is going to be absolutely amazing. Evolution versus S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to be awesome. Um, Triple H, I, I'm a huge fan of Triple H's. I'm a few, huge fan of the S.H.I.E.L.D. Batista, I think, is a lot better than we're giving him credit for. Even in this run, he's he's been better than people have given him credit for. And Randy Orton would book properly and not made look a made look like a pussy paper champion is one of the best wrestlers on their roster. One of the most intense, one of the most emotional, one of the best guys. He might not cut the best promo and he never has. But he brings so much charisma and emotion into the match. I, I think there's, this is only going to do great things for the Shield going forward. You know, putting them up even on a higher pedestal than they already are. Evolution going forward. It's going to be awesome in my opinion. Coming off of that, our second semifinal match. Cesaro versus Rob Van Dam. Build as... The current Paul Heyman guy versus an original Paul Heyman guy. RVD picks up the win when Jack Swagger and Zeb Coulter come out to interfere, which was shocking to me, setting up a finals of Wade, Bad News Barrett, and Rob Van Dam, which I think is going to be a great match. Uh, this was a very good match. I'd like to see more of it. I think their styles could mesh well into a, even a match of the year candidate. I think Cesaro is going to move on to bigger and better things than just the Intercontinental title. I have a feeling he will very soon be in the World Championship mat mix, but I liked what they did. I even liked the interview afterwards where Paul, where Rob Van Dam told Cesaro to three things to keep him out of your money, keep him out of your business, and keep him away from your career about Paul Heyman. I thought that was kind of funny. But anyway, going back to the show, we had our second Divas match, Oksana versus Paige. Now, the one on Friday night on SmackDown I thought was a better match. This one was very solid itself. I liked it. I enjoy it. The thing about it is, when Paige comes out, she commands your attention. You gravitate to what she's doing, and you want to see what she's doing, and you follow what she's doing. She has that pool, that it factor that very few people, man or woman, have. And she's got it in spades. Now, the thing I was disappointed in... There was little to no crowd reaction on it. Sitting at home, I was loving it. I thought the match was awesome. But the crowd was eerily silent. So maybe, you know, we're going to get... They keep giving us good Divas matches. Maybe, just maybe, you'll pull the crowd into it and we'll get a good Divas division back, which I think is only better for business. Last but not least, the main event of the night, of course, page one. Uh, John Cena versus all three of the Wyatt family. Very interesting match. Bray Wyatt doing, dancing with Cena, toying around with Cena, doing everything but attacking him during the match, which eventually leads to a three-on-one attack against Cena, which they throw away pretty quickly and weirdly. And then the creepy promo afterwards with Cena's head in Bray Wyatt's lap, singing to him, he's got the whole world in his hands. I hope they don't use this as a crutch. I really don't. Uh, the fact that the chant carrot caught on after WrestleMania, the fact that he threw used it as a throwaway line. To me, Bray Wyatt is better than a catchphrase. He's a different character that should not be using catchphrases. 
So the whole singing part, I hope they get away with. Right now it's in its infancy, so I'm okay with it right now. It's compelling and it's amazing and he's probably, Bray Wyatt's probably the best talker on WWE television not named Paul Heyman. <coughs> but a way, great way to go off the air, some real th threats to John Cena. The more he faces Bray Wyatt, the more you see that fear in his face. And John Cena, kudos to him for doing, doing an amazing job putting over Bray Wyatt over the past couple months. Now coming off of this, we're going to go right into our ratings for the week. Now if you've seen the show before, we have a 1 to 5 skill. One being the worst, five being the best. One's a great colleague, two's a Santino, three's a Damian Sandow, four's a Cesaro, five's a Daniel Bryan. I'm gonna give this show a I'm gonna give the show a solid four, a Cesaro. A lot of stuff to like. A little bit that I didn't like. A little bit of tweaking here and there, and this could have been a great show. As it is, it was a very okay show. Um, could have improved in some places. Not a bad show overall, though. But basically, that's all I have to say about that. My name is George Coles, and this has been another episode of Heel Heat.